Let's check in with NBC News Now correspondent Simone Boyce. She has the latest headlines from NBCNews.com. Simone, how you doing? Hi, Simone. Hey, Allison. All right, we are going to What's start with the latest on the pandemic. The U.S. is starting a late-stage well, trial like of an experimental recording. COVID vaccine from Novavax. Up to 30,000 volunteers will receive two-dose shots across roughly 115 sites between the U.S. and Mexico. Well, emergency officials say they're investigating a, quote, highly suspicious fire that damaged a black church in Springfield, Massachusetts overnight. The local fire commissioner there called the fire a, quote, potential hate crime. And a Chinese court has sentenced citizen journalist Zhang Zhan to four years in jail. Her lawyer says she was accused of, quote, provoking trouble after she reported on the COVID outbreak in Wuhan. And more than 190,000 ceiling fans sold at the Home Depot are being recalled following reports that the blades can detach. In a statement, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission warned the Mara indoor-outdoor ceiling fan could potentially cause injury or property damage. Where we going? And Ilaria Baldwin, author and wife yep. of Alec Baldwin, is defending her heritage following questions over her inconsistent Spanish accent and first name. Social media user who surfaced a 2015 Today Show clip understand. in which she has trouble remembering the English what are we word doing? cucumber. But in an Instagram video, Here we are she is a white girl who grew up in Massachusetts and Spain. The, Allison, the internet is lit with comments about this one right now. I'll send it back to you. Simone, I will not admit publicly to how much time I spent discussing this last night with my friend Charlene from high school. We are obsessed with this story. <laughs> it is an interesting and evolving story, absolutely. I'll send it back to you. And look, sometimes you just can't find the word for cucumber. What can you do? Simone, thank you. Authorities have identified the suspect in the Christmas Day bombing in downtown Nashville. That suspect died in the blast. In a briefing earlier today, Tennessee investigators explained how they were able to ID him. First and foremost, the, the calls that came in from the public were absolutely key uh, to the identification, uh, at least with a name of, uh, of a direction for the investigation to take. Then there were additional items. Uh, of evidence that were collected because we then had a name to, to compare uh, when we did the DNA analysis. And so we, we uh, were able to uh, go to locations uh, to collect additional uh, forensic evidence. But tonight, that suspect's motive is still a mystery. Well, NBC News Investigations correspondent no Tom Winter joining me now. So, Tom, tell us more. What specific evidence helped investigators identify the suspect here? Well, something here, Allison, as simple as, as uh, gloves and a hat, uh, basically found in the suspect's car, which he'd given to another individual. And according to the person you just heard from in the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, uh, apparently in the course of their case, they came across uh, these gloves and a hat uh, sometime before Saturday night. Uh, they were able to get DNA from both of those items and use it as comparison. So it's one thing to recover human tissue from the scene, but then you need to compare that against uh, against the person who you think it is. In this case, Anthony Quinn Warner. Uh, they received tip calls from the public, which they say were, quote, okay. key uh, to keying in on Warner. Uh, once they keyed in on him, they what were able to get those it? items to compare the DNA to that I just described. Uh, and then they were girl? able to get a match, and so they figured out that that's the person uh, who they were looking for, the person who was involved in this that? On top of that, they talked to the manufacturer of the RV that well? was used in the blast to figure out where the VIN is. That's the vehicle identification number, which they could then use to track back I to see who it. owned the RV. So you have a it's couple known. of different uh, evidence points here, which create a nexus uh, for investigators to determine who is responsible for this okay. uh, for the suicide blast, Allison. You say so. So, Tom, tell us, what avenues are law enforcement officials exploring here to try to piece together what the motive was? Right, so it's a couple of things right now, and some of this is just good old-fashioned mm -hmm. investigative and, and police work, basically going back and developing a timeline. One, you want a timeline of this person's life. What do people know about him and when? What things happened to him? What things did he do? What were his behaviors? Why would you do now, that? His mother, according to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, is cooperating uh, in this case. And on top of that, they've huh? conducted a number of interviews so far. They're trying to expand that okay. circle right now. Uh, and basically talk you to anybody who uh, may have been an acquaintance of his, may have been uh, no. you know, 
in a case like this, they might look for, you know, a barber. 